good morning. I am going to be showing you guys how I'm going to do the final step, um, which is adding the black wax. So the top drawer has been um, black waxed and the bottom drawer has not. So I want this whole entire piece to look like this, where it has um, that extra dimension to it. It looks a little grungier because that's what um, the style, like my bed frame is like the grays with the um, black wax. So I wanted to kind of match that, but add a pop of color. So I chose to go with the vintage duck egg with the stormy seas, drop cloth, dried sage. That was my whole um, array of colors that I used on this so far for my video yesterday. Good morning, Tammy. So I am going to do all over um, on this piece, the black wax, except for the top. I just want to add one more layer of paint to the top. Um, even though I, I painted it and I sealed it already, I'm just going to add one more layer just to make sure um, that it's fully covered and it's durable. And so the whole rest is going to be wax today though. So I'm using Dixie Bell Besting Wax in Black. I have my little microfiber towel and then um, just like a fine artist brush that I'm going to use to get into all the details um, because my finger is not going to be able to get all the way to that keyhole and it just it makes it look a lot better and not so spotty. So I'm actually going to start out with this step of using the paintbrush. I'm just going to start painting it on. Now I like how there's some areas where the paint, um, I didn't sand this down or anything before adding wax, so there's little ridges from when I was blending the paint across and it started to dry and it was kind of not like pulling back the paint but it was just getting thicker and thicker in those areas. So I can see some of the brush strokes, but the uh, wax picked that up. And so I like that look because that's kind of, that's the look I was going for was this like unfinished, grungy, worn look. So if you want a finish that's like just perfect and you just want to add some of that depth to it without having these marks, you want to make sure that you use a really fine grit sandpaper and sand down just really lightly. Make sure you clean it really well. And you can even add a sealer to it before you add the wax. That way you can pull back the wax or use like a, a baby wipe to pull back more of the wax where you don't want it. Hey Donna. Um, who else do I have on here? Hey Brenda and Karen. Thank you, Karen. I love this color or these colors that I chose. They just blended really, really well together. And I pulled this in and um, put it next to our bed yesterday because my husband likes to charge his phone at night and have like the TV remotes on his side. And this was the nightstand was from his side of the bed. So I pulled it in there and we used it, but it looks really good next to our bed frame. So once I finish both the nightstands, then I will post a picture as long as we're still living in this house and <laughs> our stuff hasn't been packed up yet. So I'm going to coat this entire piece with the black wax. I don't want to leave any area um, without it.
so a word of advice. <laughs> I have all of my Dixie Bell paint and patinas and patina sprays. I have it all in a container um, and I'm hoping that they'll be able to ship everything. But I had it all stored together and I didn't have my patina spray like in a uh, plastic bag or its own separate container. And so when I was pushing it, like pushing the container underneath the bed to store it, apparently the nozzle like sprayed and they have a product that is called, um, oh, what is it? Prime Start, I think, for the patina line. And it's used for putting on metal. If you want to add that patina look to metal, you want to coat it with Prime Start first. And the reason why is because if you use the spray, it actually will patina metal. So this was sitting in the bottom of the container with all of my paint and the patina started to eat away at this metal container. So that is why you want to use that product when you're using it on metal. Because you want the look of patina but you still want it to be durable and you don't want it to actually eat away at what you're trying to make over. Can you guys hear the wind outside? It is so windy. I'm surprised my dogs aren't barking because it's blowing the door and it sounds like somebody's trying to come through the front door. And usually they bark at anything. So I'm going to show you real fast why I'm using the paintbrush so that you can see the difference. So I'm going to start wiping away right here where I just kind of brushed it into all of these um, lower areas. And then I'm going to take the same rag with some uh, black wax on it and put it over here. And then I'm going to do the same thing and rub away at it. So you can barely tell that I added the black wax right there versus right here. Because when I'm rubbing those raised areas, it's still sitting in the little divots in between each bump. And so that is the look that I want. Now I'm going to take the rag and now I can add it to the rest of the open area.
I didn't share, thank you. Um, yes, Connie, this is uh, Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax in Black. because it, it just adds so much depth but it's not too much to where it takes over like the color that was underneath like you can still see that it still has like all of those um, tones from the vintage duck egg it just looks a little bit deeper I'm not sure if you guys can see or not, but I clearly didn't take out the contents of the drawer. And you can let this sit up to, I think it said like 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, 15 or 20 minutes. But I just kind of, I apply it and then wipe it back. Kind of impatient. Thank you, Debbie. Um, yes, so this piece is for me. It was like a really cheap um, Ikea nightstand that my husband and I got years and years ago, and we just we haven't upgraded to anything nice. And so instead of just throwing them away and having them go to a landfill, I decided that I'm going to try to make them as beautiful as they can be. So I added my little um, epoxy sculpt details and I totally painted it. I'm still not 100% sure. I may end up after all doing a wood plank top. Um, I just, I'm not sure yet. I still have to get legs to put underneath. And I think what I've decided is I'm going to go to Lowe's and get the little really pretty six inch um, furniture feet. And I'm just gonna screw some um, wood underneath so where you can't see it and then the, the feet screw into it. And so it'll raise it up an extra six inches because our bed is like, it's almost two feet higher than these nightstands. So that is pretty much wiped back. Let me swipe away my comments real fast so I can see if you guys can tell. Yes, okay. So see, now you can see a little bit better on this drawer because it's still, um, once it dries, it does, in my opinion, I feel like it lightens up just a tiny bit, but you can see all of these areas really well right now where that's kind of where my brush marks were and I didn't sand it down. 
I didn't want it to look perfect. I want it to look really aged and dirty. And so I left it. talking about like a brown wood plank top um, Debbie because I think if I do a wood plank top I'm gonna do like a weathered gray look because I know that like a brown would look really pretty with the blues but my bed and all of the tops um, for the rest like our dressers and everything in our bedroom it's all like a weathered gray finish so I'm wanting to stay with that. Oh, I will show before and after pics. Um, I actually, I didn't take a before picture before I added the details on these, but I have if you can see in the back, right back here, I have one of the drawers that has some of the details on so far, but it's still, I still need to finish the bottom border and then that other little piece right across the top. But once I finish that and I, before I start painting the second one, I'll take a picture of it. But it definitely is a huge transformation and I didn't realize how much it made this look like more of a quality piece of furniture than when I brought it into my bedroom last night and it was sitting on one side of the bed and then I had my unfinished one sitting on the other side of the bed. And I was really surprised that it actually, I mean, it took an ugly piece of furniture and it really made it pretty. I know, um, I know there's a lot of other like chalk paint, mineral paint, clay paint, different brands, and I've tried a lot of other brands and I do like a lot of other brands, but what I really like about Dixie Belle is um, not only do they have this huge product line of not only paints, they have all of their top coats, they have a patina line, they have different waxes, their gilding waxes. There's so much product that I still have not tried, but you can finish just about any type of finish you could think of using their products. And they really, the paint goes a long ways. Uh, it really is not super expensive. And um, I mean, this wasn't even real wood. This is, um, like the pressed particle board, I'll spin it around here to the back and see if you can see. But it's all of this crap with like a contact paper on top. So this paint has adhered really well to this and I didn't have to use any extra products to get it to adhere. But even if I did need to add something like their slick stick, they have that option. That's another product they have. And I'm not getting paid to say any of this, by the way. I just, I really love their products. And I hear a lot of people complain about 
like paint brands being too expensive, but it may be too expensive if you're just getting into um, painting furniture and you're not familiar with different steps that you can take to make the paint go further, like using um, a little bit of water from a spray bottle on your brush that helps to smooth it out and take the paint that's lobbing up in your brush and put it on your piece. Um, there's just a lot of tips and tricks that it really is honestly one of the most affordable brands that I have tried. And so I definitely recommend it. If you haven't um, tried it, give it a try. Because I have not met anybody that hasn't loved it. No, I did not. So, I feel like when you don't apply clear wax before the black wax, you can see where the black wax kind of sits in any little imperfection areas where it's like um, your brush strokes or um, any little like scratches in your piece. And so I wanted this to look really aged, which is why I did not add um, like a, a wax or a clear coat prior to adding my black wax. So that was the wrong side. Flip it and like I said, I'm not doing the top um, today because I do want to add one more coat of paint before I add um, black wax to it. Or maybe I'll just decide that I want to, after all, add the wood plank top. So we'll see. Yes, it does. <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, Dixie Bell is definitely my favorite. And I'm not saying that there isn't other brands that I love because there are different brands that I love to use every once in a while if they have different colors that Dixie Bell doesn't have or whatnot. But overall, I can finish um, any project really that I would want to with Dixie Bell. And I even started using their um, paint for canvases and um, painting picture frames. And it goes a lot further than just furniture. You can do a lot with it. I painted my shiplap wall <laughs> with um, Dixie Bell paint, so you can even paint walls with it.
honestly, this is in the middle. I blended in drop cloth, dried sage into vintage duck egg, and then vintage duck egg into stormy seas on the very edge. So it's a combination of colors, but I would say the most color that it picked up was uh, vintage duck egg. So now I have that side finished up. Something. Oh, I have to get up here. Almost done. Um, I have painted fabric. Actually, um, Betty, I painted last year it over here. I, um, I had some extra fabric laying around and so I painted or I re kind of did a crappy job of stapling some fabric onto my computer chair that was like the faux leather was peeling up and like shedding all over the floor and so I ended up painting it in Lucky Lavender last year and it looked really pretty but I'm really messy like I paint uh, canvases and I sit in this chair so like when I'm flicking paint it was getting on this chair when I was um, writing with sharpies I drop pens all the time whenever I write and so sharpies would fall and bounce off the chair and so I had like sharpie marks along the edges um, so I ended up repainting it and it was supposed to match the eucalyptus that I have on my desk and the color didn't quite come out right and so I think I'm just going to trash this chair when I move and get a new one but you can definitely, definitely paint fabric even. Um, he used wax and the next day it rubbed right off. So I'm not sure why it would have rubbed completely off. Did you seal, like put like a polycrylic or any type of like a clear coat sealer on it prior to waxing? Because it shouldn't, I mean, when you wipe back, it's going to look completely smooth. It's not going to really have the feeling of being waxed because it's going to dry and um, you're basically pulling all that extra wax that is not like seeping into the paint and sealing it. You're pulling that off when you're wiping it back. So if you're using like a clear wax, maybe that's why it looked like it wiped completely off because it just gives it just the slightest sheen. Um, I believe for the most part their waxes, unless you're going with like a metallic wax or like their gilding waxes, they have like a very matte sheen to them. And so it still looks like it's a chalk painted piece when you're finished and you wipe everything back, which I love because some brands, um, when you wax it and then you wipe it back, it's like super glossy and shiny. And I like to use chalk paint not only just because I like the product, but because I like that matte finish. And so I love that their um, waxes, for the most part, don't give you like a super high sheen.
curious of what you're wiping it back with because if you wipe it back with like a cleaning product after it's just freshly waxed, um, maybe, I, I'm not sure because I haven't tried, but maybe it'll pull some of the wax off. Um, I know all of their products have a cure time, and so that's, I don't know, that's another thing that I'm kind of thinking of different reasons why it would have done that. Um, when painting a wall, does it need to be sealed? So I recommend it. Um, it doesn't technically need to, especially if it's in an area that isn't like a high traffic area. So the wall that I have is um, up against the wall in my dining room, but I have my like coffee uh, coffee bar buffet on one side, and then I have my other like china hutch up against on the other side. So it's not like people are walking up against it and rubbing up against it. If it is going to be in more of a high traffic area where people may be um, rubbing up against it or bumping into it, then I would recommend sealing it because just like any sort of a um, like a chalk paint or a flat paint that even like builders use in houses, it's you can't just like wipe off marks on those types of paint. You have to um, have it sealed or go with like a different type of finish. Um, to be able to constantly clean or wipe away any sort of marks or dirt or grime or whatnot that that gets on it. spray wax and I've tried both of those and I've never had any issues of that wiping back so I'm not sure. Um, I know at one point they changed their formula for the best stain wax um, and I don't know if that's just because it wasn't, it didn't have like the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like it wasn't a very intense color I think is what I heard at one point. But I'm not sure. I've had the same can of wax for a while and I've never had any issues with it. So I don't know. Thank you for sharing with us. Oh, thank you. Um, what kind of finish should you paint on a kitchen table? So for the kitchen table, what you'll want to do is if it's a kitchen table that's used all the time, you want to make sure to use the strongest sealer on the top. And so the products that I would um, recommend is um, Gator Hide, Dixie Bell Gator Hide. So that is their strongest sealer. And I would put as many coats as you can on it just to guarantee that after years and years of use, especially if you have like little kids or um, it's just like constantly a messy area, <laughs> um, I would recommend sealing it really well. Now my kitchen table that I did, I eat at it not nearly as much as I would like to. It's really used for um, like Thanksgiving and Christmas or Christmas Eve. So I use it like twice a year and it's mainly there for just something that looks pretty and fills in the space. But I didn't even use a wax on mine and Dixie Belle, I think it's after 30 days, it self seals for the most part. Um, so I can use, I use like a really non-abrasive wax cleaner, I mean, um, glass cleaner, and then I use like a microfiber rag that's not going to shed, um, or transfer any color or anything like that, and I'll just lightly wipe it. I don't like scrub or anything like that, and I haven't really had any issues. I had some chargers at one point that I bought at Hobby Lobby, and the back, or the bottom of the chargers is black, and I don't know if I should have wiped that down before I put them on the table, but after putting them on the table and scraping them across, I noticed like little lines of like where the black had rubbed off onto the paint. 
and I got most of it off just with a glass cleaner, but I'll probably end up repainting and then using um, uh, Gator Hide to seal it just so I don't have to have those issues of if I spill something on it or uh, if something kind of like scratches along the surface, it's not going to rub into the white paint that I have on there. And same with Gator Hide three coats. Sorry, it's so far away. Oh, your kitchen cabinets. Oh, I want, well, I guess I haven't really had old kitchen cabinets that I can do that to, and I wouldn't want to really do that to brand new kitchen cabinets. But I'm hoping that when we move, if we end up moving into like a fixer upper house, then I'm hoping to, uh, talk my husband into letting me paint cabinets and like whether it's the bathroom or the kitchen. But I'm curious, what color did you use, Debbie? Thank you, Sandy. So I am just about finished up here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm gonna set this up here so you guys have a little bit of an idea of what it looked like before to what it looks like now. Oh, good morning, Penny. I'm actually just finishing up. But this is what the nightstand looked like before, minus the details. It was all just like this black color um, of the pressed wood with like the contact tape or whatever you call it on top. And then I completely refinished them and made it look really pretty. Fluff and, and barnwood red. Oh my gosh, you have to send me a picture, Debbie. I love looking at pictures of like kitchen remodels and getting like all different ideas of someday what I would like to do for my own kitchen. Thank you, Betty. All right, you guys, I think I'm finished up on here. Um, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you guys have projects that you've worked on and you just want to share your work, feel free to send it to me because every once in a while I do like to share, um, as long as it's okay with everybody, um, share like a customer's picture and, or not a customer because I guess you aren't my customer, but um, share another artist's picture and do like a featured artist. Thank you, Crystal. All right, you guys, thank you for joining in today and have a great Sunday.